Hi, uh, this is the Chronicles of Jacqueline, and um, I'm going to go over this thing because I know the Lord is asking me to pray for the Jewish people and the African American people to be in line with the Jewish people. Now, what I want people to realize is is that um, having been in Israel three times, and um, I actually do have this obsession of understanding how Jewish people ended up in Israel, and it's sort of like a, a calling, I would say. And... This calling most likely, you know, came about because as a child, I did see a vision of Jesus Christ before I even knew who Jesus Christ is. So uh, when I was around four years old, I assumed that the person who appeared to me when I was waking up was just a foreigner because he wasn't Filipino. He was, um, this is in 58 Pedro Cruz in um, Manila, Philippines, and um this person appeared to me largely because there was a time in my life when I had fallen down the stairwell and I got to the bottom of that thing uh, unscathed. It wasn't painful. In fact, it was just like I felt like a cotton ball. So for quite some time, I was looking for that invisible force, I mean, that is trying to save me. Um, and that is the only uh, recollection I could have that could be a reason why Jesus Christ showed up to me. Um, so anyway, um, I've gone over this before in terms of meeting Jesus Christ as a young girl. And my mother was the one that I went to. And um, at the time, like I said, I don't know who Jesus Christ is. I'm assuming, you know, I had, uh, I've seen a foreigner and I was so excited to tell my mom. So when my mom told me, Jesus, and you look like you've seen Jesus Christ, I assume every child experience this so um many more years will happen in my life where you know um i you know i had this memory but i never really mentioned it to anybody up until three months before my mother that my mother was passing that i kept wondering what could it possibly mean well when my mother eventually was hospitalized, I remember talking to her and telling her, I don't want you to be in fear because Jesus Christ is at the foot of your bed. Just as I had a vision of Jesus at the foot of my bed. And um, that was like my parting word with my mom. And I had no idea in another week I'm going to lose her. So um, after that, losing my mom, eventually I ended up um, in a church and there was a rabbi that visited the church. And when he prayed over me, he said, Be wise as serpent, gentle as a dove. And he said, I need you to discover your family lineage. And um, I thought it was kind of funny. It's funny that he said that because I was like, Well, the poor guy didn't know I came from the Philippines. I'm not Jewish. So if he thinks that I'm going to somehow appear as Jewish, that would be kind of odd. Now, now um, somehow when I ended up in Israel, I thought to myself, you know, maybe he was right. Um, maybe I was meant to come here. That's why he said that, that I should look for my family line. The The first time I went there, I, I got to see how Jewish people are, and I was alone. And I got to see the good, the bad, and the ugly, I would say. And for the most part, I was treated fine. Um... And around that time, too, I was already becoming very curious about this Jewish line. And then I realized, lo and behold, you know, my name is Jacqueline. It's like Jacob's line. And I remember having history books, looking at even um, history of medicine, and looking at history of the Jewish people, how many of them have survived through the years. So then the second time I went to Israel... Um, I was with the Messianic Jewish people, and one of the things they wanted me to pray for is the unity of the Jewish people, and um, they said that, oh, well, you guys are going to be uh, our ambassadors, and I thought, well, that's kind of funny, because I'm not political, and it was so odd, because just in a matter of few days to a few weeks, I found myself um, going on to online and I was um, I got the nerve to eventually do YouTube videos and at the time I was trying to reach out to Muslim people and then eventually the Lord told me I want you to pray for the Jewish people and so 
the moment I prayed for the Jewish people, a lot of my prayers got answered. So up to a point where I had more and more Jewish people that I, you know, I see online. Um, it was like a growing number. Then um, at this point in time, the Lord told me to pray for the Jewish people and the African-American people. And it's largely because there is the Lord is going to do something. Um, and this is going to be through the Holy Spirit. There's going to be a massive expansion of teaching that's going to happen in Israel. Because what people need to understand is the Jewish people that ended up in Israel, they didn't really want to go there, but they got pushed out of the countries of where they are. And they, I mean, during the time of Hitler, and then they were giving a chance to go to this nation. Now, there are remnants of Jewish people there, and then the Palestinians are there. Now, a lot of the Palestinians, there's not really a Palestine. Um, these people are coming from Jordan, different parts of Arabia, who settled there. Uh, it's just like if, you know, in the Philippines, you know, the different islands, and then all of a sudden different ships came by, and they inhabited the place. So that's very much what had happened in um, Israel. But now, these people that claim to be Jewish, uh, that got kicked out of the country because they're being persecuted, got sent to Israel because they were not being accepted anywhere else. So what is fascinating is that when I look at some of the African-American people who call themselves Isra uh, Israelites, I, I don't doubt them. I think they, perhaps spiritually at the least, they are meant to um, discover their roots and they have the right to do so. However, um, I feel as though we need to pray for forgiveness and uh, forgiving because there's still a lot of anger and there's kind of like this need to say that, oh, well, I'm, I'm Israelites and those people are, are fake. Well, I think we have to be very careful because I don't think her, these people necessarily wanted to be in Israel, except that they got kicked out of the countries that, where they were. Um, and to say that um, only dark-skinned people are Israelites, it doesn't really make sense because Solomon had different wives. Uh, and you can look that up. You, you can look at Solomon and how many different... He took wives all over the place. Okay? So you... And if the father is, uh, is Jewish or Israelite, then the children will be Israelites. So now the converts, when people convert to Judaism... What people need to realize is this like the story of Ruth and Naomi, and you can look that up. Ruth and Naomi. Somebody else pointed this out. Ruth and Naomi. Ruth embraced the mother-in-law, Naomi, and wanted to be with her people and her God. You know, let your people be my people and let your God be my God. Um, so the Jewish people embrace Ruth, okay, as a Jew converted you. Now the word born again, before it became like somebody who is a pagan becoming a Christian and then born again when you get baptized, people need to realize that born again was used for a Gentile becoming Jewish. Now Jesus was always Jewish. So when he said you have to be born again and um, to enter the kingdom of God, you have to be like a child. Now what that means what Jesus meant by that is that you have to believe in him and profess your faith that you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then the other thing is that you have to be like a child because the Lord wants uh, the little children to come to him, to receive him. Because if we don't teach our children to, um, to love Yeshua, Jesus Christ, then they are uh, more likely to be led astray. Okay? So um, this is the reason why Jesus Christ says, let the little children come to me, because he loves them. They are innocent. So to be, to enter the kingdom of God, you cannot be too angry and point fingers at people. So we cannot assume that just because, um, well, I happen to have, I happen to look like the dark-skinned um, Israelites and those people over there, they had to be completely fake. They're not necessarily fake because... There are people that the Lord 
gave them spiritual blindness. And let's give an example, um, Paul. St. Paul was a Jew, uh, and he was in the rabbinical order even. He was in the, he, he was a, a strong um, teacher against uh, Christianity because to him it's blasphemy to become Christian. So he was actually one of those people who were persecuting Christians. But lo and behold, when, G when the Lord met up with him, the scales fell off. And Paul became the great, one of the greatest evangelize, evangelizer. Um, you know, one of the greatest Christian. He wrote many parts of the New Testament. So what that tells you is, you cannot say that because right now the Jewish people in Israel cannot receive Jesus Christ, it doesn't mean that that is their fault. Sometimes the Lord uh, has not removed the scales off their eyes. Okay, so now um, when you think about um, the Khazars, you know, the Ashkenazi Jews, and they're saying, well, they converted at such and such time, they're not the real descendants of Jacob. Well, you, you can't really be sure of that because, one, even if they are converted, it doesn't mean that they're not Jewish. If they wanted that faith, now we can argue, oh, you know, it wasn't wholehearted. and Well, that's subject to interpretation. That's very subjective because when I went to Israel, these people are praying very hard. Um, you know, I can't say that it's just con complete uh, fakes, you know. That's too much to fake every day. So um, I think the biggest downfall and the difficulty that Israel is facing, which is why it needs a lot of prayer for unity, and it is getting there. They're getting to that point. They're getting the point of what Christians are trying to do, even though they may have still have spiritual blindness, and Christians are getting to the root of the Bible. Um, and we cannot be too proud as Christians. We have to still embrace the Jewish people because there is an order to enter the kingdom of God. Um, and you can research that in Revelation 7 where it's all the tribes of Israel. And then below that, you know, like you will see all nations type, you know, and tongues, people and tribe uh, and tongues. So with that being said, that means that the Lord is going to recognize the different nations in the heavenly kingdom with the different languages too and that's included in there so the lord wants to save everybody of different nations different languages so go thee uh, and multiply and then there's also the spread it to the world and i don't know why in some of the israelites that are african-american they wanted to say well they're not real so i mean what do you want to do like renounce renounce them for what so what i could see though is that uh, perhaps because everybody is fallen the catholic church has fallen the muslims are definitely in a complete mess um, they do not know the word of god now the Ashkenazi jew because they had converted to judaism or if they are, you know, from the seed of Jacob, um, we have to still realize that if they converted, that that is valid. Okay, even after so many years, their ancestors wanted them to believe in Judaism. Now, if they have the skill and it's not yet removed, we cannot persecute them for what they don't want to believe. However, what I could see is the African-American people who claim to be Israelites it is very much valid because a lot of the scripture can pertain to them. But the good thing is, is that these African American people, they have the same persecution as the people that ended up in Israel. But the key thing there is, these African American people, they do not adhere to the Talmud. And the Talmud is the biggest downfall for the Ashkenazi Jews because the Talmud is not scripturally based. It is just man-made laws. So when you have people following man-made laws, they cannot teach the word of God completely and that's what's lacking in Israel. So with the advent of African American people discovering themselves to be Israelites, this will in effect give a good teaching 
to many of the people who are Jews in Israel. So we have to call on the Holy Spirit because it's not my duty to correct one and the other. Uh, it's not my duty to remove the scales because I cannot. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. But I'm pointing out to people where we are. But ultimately, the Lord is in the business of saving. So we have to bring unity to people. Uh, we need to pray grace upon them and removal of the curses and to bring about the Word of God. So I, this, um, this is where this is pretty much my message. And uh, shalom and God bless.